Hey, it's Joe Lyons from the Automator, and I'm going to cover what we automated this week without a hotkey. Let me uh, jump into my page. Here we go. And we got a lot of client work here at first. So this um, Danny is one of our radiologist clients. We've done, obviously, you can see here quite a few things with him. It's client work, so I'm not going to jump into the code, but you get an idea of what we're working. Creating a screen clipping tool that will really grab his stuff and integrate it into his report um, and even check, I think, for certain values to see if they're above or below certain things, which is really cool. We also have one we're comparing using the Whisper API compared to what the tool he currently uses, and, and I think at some point, if he decides the Whisper one's better, we might be using it instead of his native tool. And then, of course, also taking those results and doing other things with them. So it's very cool. Um, transcription, there we go. Let's go down here. Um, we had another client, Steve, where um, he has, I guess, maybe like 10,000 images that he has, and he wants to have AI tag them. So it's pretty cool is what we're doing is we're using the computer vision from ChatGPT, take the picture, submit it to ChatGPT, ask it what it sees, get that information, and then say, hey, kind of like another uh, follow-up one to this, we say, hey, do you see a sun in this picture? Do you see the waves in this picture? And if it says yes to all of them, great, we move forward. If not, we go back and double check it again. Um, so that's very cool. Then we're out adding them all as XMP metadata about the picture so he can use it in other tools to find out what's in all these pictures to build a bit like a database thing for him. So that's um, pretty cool. We're doing all that stuff. Um, controls. We had a really good, fun hero call last week with, um, we were looking at using I'm using controls with site as the example. So I often mention in the hero group how you can hide controls, like so buttons, you can move them, you can disable them. So let's say, let me bring up site so I can give you an idea. Um, and I don't know the stage of this code, otherwise I'd run it. But um, let's say in here, if I wanted to disable this or disable this, you can do it. It doesn't matter the program. If it's a Windows 32 program with auto hockey, it's very, very easy to do. Um, if you want to move the button, um, you can do that as well, or just completely make it disappear, which is really cool. So I think it's, it's a lot of people just don't quite understand how easy that is to do. So we had a, a simple one here walking through doing it, and, it, and it's again using just the built-in controls, um, commands, and methods with uh, Auto Hotkey. So very very simple. We um, covered that in the Hero Call over the weekend. Uh, so if you're not a Hero member, like this is where we teach a lot of these things and just expose people to different approaches. Um, here's a to do. Now this needs work, but um, I want a button I can hit to put me into do not disturb mode, basically have it as a toggle. And so um, I think I was, yeah, that's in, under Studio. So I'm still using Studio, the V2's version of Studio, but I'm using Studio uh, to edit my auto hotkey stuff. And um, this is not a work, this is not working code. I was trying to use Claude to get ideas on how to go about it. And I'll let the guys look through some of these examples and maybe we'll find a different one. Maybe we have to use PowerShell. I think we'll use AutoHotKey to run the PowerShell, but um, I couldn't find a native way with AutoHotKey to do that. I don't know what this looks like, some sort of oh, blank document. Um, here's one of our, our OCR stuff of our library for doing OCR. Um, our Blur tool, we updated that. So the DPI, we made an adjustment to the DPI. So if you have different DPIs on different monitors, it will take that into account when you're blurring your screens. So um, we fixed that and our window snipping tool, which will be the final version of the V1 version of the window snipping tool. We're gonna to make a V2 version uh, at some point. Um, we haven't released these yet, but these are some great FFmpeg tools where we wrap MP3s um, or we, we work with them in different ways. This one reduces the video size and I'll have to have an example. Actually, let me see here. So let me put it up here. Uh, this is just from my other side of the screen here. It took this one hour, um, let's see, an hour and four minutes call uh, and got it from over a gig down to 289 megs. So what is that? Like um, less than a quarter of the size. So the quality also is very, very similar. So it just runs it through the, that. To push it through, the, it probably takes about 12 minutes, I'm guessing. I'm trying to remember, but um, it, it you can drag in, you can do multiple files, but it really frees up a lot of space on your hard drive without losing video quality. Now, I still upload our full version for the extra quality to YouTube. They're unlisted, because only Hero members can watch those. But you get the idea, right? It's just a great tool, and it's it's almost a no-braining tool. You don't have to think. Uh, let me show you the GUI. So this is the GUI. So if I wanted to, I would just drag uh, that... <laughs> 
let me pick a smaller video if I got one handy. So I'll drag a video in here and that's all you do, right? And then it'll start processing it and, very, and that's done. And it actually shows you, so this one, I saved a third of a meg. It's down to 19%, I think, of what the original was and it has some metrics in the time. But if I drag a bunch of them or I open a folder, uh, it would actually go to the folder on what I had processed through last as well and go through recursively if you wanted to, to, to do that. So it's a very cool tool, this MP3 Ripper. I had to do an update on that because, and I forget the name of the extension, but it was one that we didn't have um, built into it. Uh, I was It was like from a, an um, audio book, and it was a weird extension I'd never heard of, but I just added it to my list of in the array, and sure enough, it converted them all to MP3. One thing was our status, that kind of like the notification you saw showing the status, it was taking the focus away. Every time it would get to a new audio file, it was taking the focus away of your mouse, and it was really annoying. So um, yesterday I had Isaiah update that, so it no longer did that. So that was the change we made there. Again, that one, none of our FFM tools are shared yet, but boy, they're very, very close. Um, live mic, I just... Uses FFmpeg to record your mic. Um, removing metadata. If you have videos, there's another one from FFmpeg where if you have like the title or author or other stuff and you don't want that information on there, sometimes they're really crazy long depending on where you get them from. So this tool kind of works like that last one and just removes all the metadata, which is really cool. Um, oh, that I don't know why there's a copy of it, but that's the original. Talk to AI. Isaiah was working on this yesterday. I don't think it's ready right now, otherwise I'd show it. But it allows you to hit a hotkey talk, which becomes your prompt, and then you can have selected text, and it will push that into it and um, really save you a lot of time of navigating to your your chat bot. Uh, brings it all like right in your face, and you can have a conversation, continue a conversation with it there. So it's very cool. Let's keep going down. Talk to you. Yeah, we're, we're doing some work with that. The, um, we also made it where it works better to record right when you hit the record button so we've we've updated that uh, flexifinder let me see if i can find that so i noticed let me launch it um, actually it is running let me just i don't remember the hotkey what i realized was oh and my version is not updated uh which is funny because oh i think i have my own version <laughs> but this autohockey.com really i put in parens um hey forum hk forum because a lot of people don't realize when you say auto.com, you're really talking about the forum. Now you can also just select the V1 docs or the V2 docs or other sites or add your own. Like I can go into options. I can add my own that I want there, right? But the hk.com, a lot of people don't realize that, that those are the auto hockey forums. And if you want to search a forum, that's where you would search. So I wanted to have um, a little bit of an exception to this where the display isn't exactly what's being searched. So we updated that. Notice this also has a dark theme, uh, dark mode and light mode. If I apply, now I have light mode, and I can go back, dark mode. Um, and that does a Google search, or or, or Bing, or DuckDuckGo search on whatever many sites, and whichever ones you have selected at that point in time. It'll also remember your preference, so, um, and if you had text selected when you hit the hotkey, it would pre-fill it here, and of course you can just put this on a double quote, put quotes around everything, so. It's a very cool little tool. Um, Flex Finder, still with that. Image Format Checker. Oh, I actually wrote this one. We were talking with, um, Isaias and I were talking with Irfian, and we were looking at images, and just because a file is like a PNG extension does not mean it's a PNG file. It's really weird. Images are very, very weird. You would think it's just sometimes people will save stuff and change that extension, but it actually isn't the format of the file. Like the container isn't your extension. And so this check, I think I had, um, it checks for three. Uh, there's JPEG, PNG, GIF, and BMP. Now we haven't created a download on this. This is one I just did the other day. But sometimes you wanna know what actually is that image, what file format, because maybe somebody messed with it and we don't know it. So this was a little check that seems to work pretty well. Um, Insta note. I don't know what that is. Oh, this was, um, uh, this was a V1. We were going through all of our scripts and I was showing this to Rizwan. Um, Insta note is a, a tool, I think from Hellbent initially, and we need to go back and make sure we cite that, but it, it, uh, it allows you to draw on the screen and just start typing. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So you could do 
you know, if you think ahead of time, you could use this instant note to write a tool, write, write something on the screen, and then use your snippet to have your text included with it. So that's pretty cool. Um, our triggers class, this one, it, it still isn't released yet, but we keep adding to it. And at some point, we just need to release a version so you guys can play with it because um, it's, we've been doing it so long. But it's, it's great because it allows you to easily have a library where people can choose a hotkey or a hot string um, or a mouse click. And I think we were adding like a drop down for if you wanted to have a, a t edit field where people might want to store like um, we, we use them a lot for our tokens for our API calls. So I think we're adding that. That's why we kind of changed it to preferences also. So OCR with AI, this tool, um, it's pretty cool. It takes your picture and that OCR with AI also, and I'll have to do a, a special video on this. With the built-in window snipping tool that we use, we leverage the Windows 10 and 11 um, OCR engine. I think it goes back to 8, maybe. I don't think 7 had it. But it'll do OCR on your screen pretty well. But when you have data like this, it loses the structure. It kind of breaks them into columns, and, they're, and, it, and it breaks them up into different lists, and it's really awkward. The AI version of this tool doesn't do that. It somehow keeps a structure and does a much better job. So it's that's why in version two of our window snipping tool, we're going to switch to that one because, and maybe we'll have an option to use the built-in object because it still exists. But, um, you know, the, the cost when you're using the API is very inexpensive and it's just far superior in what you're getting with it. Um, so the, these are all dealing with the OCR. Oh, look, we're almost done. Getting all links from Excel. Uh, Rizwan was just updating our spreadsheet and I asked them to create a uh, an example where we go through each column and get the text from a certain column and then we were going to do API calls to go pull the titles what we're updating is on the titles of all of our downloads I want it to say v1 v2 or both v1 and v2 so people know when they go before they download it if it's a v1 or v2 or you know or both script so we're trying to get our ducks in a row for that so people have a better time this start button clock, this, um, it's a great clock, but unless you have your title bar on the side, it's not overly helpful, but it, it allows you to put your, replace your start menu with the start button clock, which is cool. Uh, super caps, this is one, we did cite it because we found where it was from, but I don't, this is one I don't, I don't think we're going to recreate in V2 because it's just something I, I didn't really understand. People use auto hotkey in all different ways, right? It's one of the things I love about the tool and I would not be doing what this guy was doing with it. I'm not knocking what he did. It's just not something that I'm I'm doing. Um, our Automator Spy, I realized in our Automator Spy, let me go ahead and launch it here. Um, what would be really cool, so if I move this here and I click somewhere, is it, we, we added the bitness, so it'll tell you what bitness that program under it is. But I also think what we'll do is here is the control, let, let's do it again here. Well, let's go, do I have still have site open? Now I'm gonna hit my button. Oh, here we go. Here's the class NN and button eight. Know we're in here. If you know what you're doing, great. If you see this here, that means it's a Win32 control, right? That we can actually easily use those controls I mentioned earlier on. But I realized, hey, we should have a bigger indicator saying Win32 control, right? To spell it out, to basically let people know um, Put a boldness or somewhere up in here saying when 32 control detected right like to let you know because a lot of people would go to um like vs code or excel in the ribbon and try to automate them and those aren't v um, win 32 controls so why not have a little flag in here in here right we'll add another one just has a row it says um win 32 control yes or no right so that I think that'll help people understand that hey, those are those are great, right? Because you can actually work with them. Our window snipping tool, yeah, that's the original. But we're like I said, updating that. Writing on computer. Oh, this was the one. And actually, I think Rizwan said he. Oh, he he said he didn't quite get it. Let me go to the V1 version. I wanted to show. So here, let me see if this will work. So H. Hello. Let's see if it works. There we go. And look, it converts it into that. Now, I wouldn't, the OCR actually handles handwriting and stuff, but this allows you to, and here we could we can write directly. Of course, writing with a mouse is uh, not easy. 
Uh, but and if I had done it down here, I would have tried to transcribe it. Up here, it just stays as a picture. So if you wanted a quick way to draw, um, that's built in using your mouse. Um, I do have a little pen thing, which I should I should demo that sometime. But yeah, this is a very very. I think it's back to XP. Um, this is a thing, and this says V2, so maybe it is the V2 version. So we got that. We haven't made a download yet, but that is. It looks like it is working now. So I wanted to create it because it was a very simple script. I think it's ink. Ink something is the name of the. Um, the object that we use, um, ink, 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 yeah, is the object. Looks like. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Um, thanks for watching. Like I said, if you have a project you're working on and you want some help with what you're doing, let me know. Of course, don't forget we have our amazing auto hockey courses that offer a double your money back guarantee. Uh, or consider the Hero Group if you're looking for one on not one on one, but on one to many. You know, we we help people though every day. In those calls, we have calls three hours a week, um, two hours on Friday and one hour on Saturday. And we also have a Telegram group where you can go to get help during the week. We point you in the right direction. So anyway, please like the video if you learned something. Uh, it helps us out. Have a great day. Cheers.